Hey everybody, welcome inside Love Tones. I'm P.T. Gazelle. My guest this evening occupies a very unique place in the harmonica community, I think. He's originally from Winnipeg, Canada, and he first broke into the scene in the 90s uh, with a highly successful and Grammy award-winning group called Crash Test Dummies. In 1998, he relocated to the UK to pursue a solo career and began to hone and refine a style that's truly, it's, it's really his own, I think. And it's reflected by a long string of very successful CDs and live performances. He's got a highly identifiable sound. It's, it's really a mix of beatboxing, infectious riffs, and poetry, I think. And uh, it makes him a real standout on the scene. So help me welcome in the inimitable Son of Dave. Hey, man, how you doing? Hi, I'm, I'm fine, thank you. Great. I feel all right. I'm great, man. Everything's good on this side. So uh, how's life in the UK right now? It, it, it's winding down, sort of... Uh... Uh, evening time. Um, I, a, a little one more glass of grape juice before before bed. I think. Ah, there you go, man. It, it could never hurt. It could never hurt. So I got to ask right off the bat, where does the name come from? Where does Son of Dave come from? Is is it as simple as it's your father, or is it is it something else? It's my dad is Dave. Okay, so I I was right the first time around for a change. Yeah, and and you mean yeah, you, you just got that without, you got that right right without any any cheat notes at all. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, I guess. mean, how did that come to you? I mean, you just you just thought it was kind of cool to do it that way, or I mean, um, it it seemed like a, I don't know. I was in a a blues name choosing frame of mind. <laughs> no, I think that one was uh, up at the top of the list. Uh, it's also a maybe a, a private thing. Okay. Some, some owner to paid to him, mm -hmm. partly for being such a difficult fellow, ah. and partly for uh, giving me a harmonica when I was little. Yeah, let's talk about that for a minute. I know that you, I know you play, uh, you play harmonica, obviously, and and obviously you're a percussionist too. Anybody that's seen any of your stuff, percussion's a big part of what you do. Were you like one day just dumbstruck by like a great harmonica player and went, wow, I want to try that? Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I was I was goofing around with it, not knowing what it was for. Just uh, hug it a hug. My my dad showed me a couple of uh, you know the, the jigs, reels, the poly wally doodle all day kind of thing, and I, and I loved it as a, a little kid. I was I was learning to play those, like he showed me, and then I saw the I saw James Cotton in a in a field. In a festival, you know, a uh, few thousand people absolutely hypnotized and tranced okay. in the, uh, in the, I guess, mid-70s. Okay. And he would have had his, his greatest touring band with him, and they were, sure. they were playing that whole, uh, that, whole, um, that whole thing, The Creeper, and, and, uh, and his version of Fever, and Rocket 88. It was, it was jaw-dropping. Yeah, man. And so I knew what the instrument was for then. Yeah, I'd say you know that's a that's a familiar story with a you know with a lot of us. When you first started, were you interested actually in beatboxing? Because I'm trying to remember the chronology. When did beatboxing really kind of like start? Isn't it about that same time? Would have been uh, earlier. It was a hip hop thing. Hey? Okay, okay. But as far as I know, I'm the first guy to to start doing it with the harmonica and mixing it in. And I was I was never interested in in Im imitating a perfect hip hop hip hop track. Or or, uh, or any other kind of sort of club or dance music. I'm still not a great beatboxer. I'm not a great harmonica player either. <laughs> but you know, I can do the two. Well, I would disagree with that, man. I would, I would, I would take, I would take exception with that because it's not like you're trying to play jazz, and it's not like you're trying to play specific melody lines or something. But what you do is extremely interesting, as far as I'm concerned, and it's infectious. I mean, the word that keep keeps popping into into mind when I when I listen to your stuff is it's infectious. Are you using an octave divider on your harmonica at all, or do you do you only do that low stuff all mouth? Because sometimes it's hard for me to even tell. Yeah, well, you know, never ask a girl what's in her handbag. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, yeah, I gotta, I, I, I gotta say, it's it's just cheating. I use a, an octave pedal usually uh, for bass lines. I'll hum through the octave pedal. Okay. 
get a to get an extra octave. Okay. Sometimes I'm just humming my own, in my own range will go down low enough to sort of make make a bit of a bass. But the really full bass is coming from hummed. And once in a while, a harmonica through that thing as well will uh, will create a bass line. Uh, so sometimes, usually humming through a through an octave pedal. I saw that recently you were, in fact, uh, it was last month, I believe, you were out on the Mark Hummel uh, thing, the, the tour with Mark Hummel, uh, the blues, what is he called, the blow-off or the... The Mark Hummel blues blowouts. This blowout. one he called, this one, Mark, he called it, uh, he called it the ultimate harmonica blowout this okay. time because he, he felt so uh, chuffed with, uh, with the quality of his his talent this time. Well, I, I find that... And also, it wasn't such a blues lineup, was it? it was well, and it's interesting because I, I interviewed Mark several months ago for this for this series, and he was talking about the fact that he wanted to get, um, you know, newer talent in there and not, and you know, and young, he kept saying younger talent, but he was, but I always got the impression, but, but, but I mean, the, the overriding thing was that he wanted to keep it, you know, in a traditional blues sense. And I, and I was like, really just, it caught my eye when I saw your name on the tour bill. And I thought, wow, that's, he must have just like been knocked out by your stuff. What was it like? Was the tour great? Was it really fun? It was a, a big, uh, a big curve for me to get the, the call from uh, Mark Hummel was at first a mystery because I didn't know what was going on, who he was. And and uh, then of course right when I understood what was what I was being asked to do I was, uh, it was yeah it was, I was really honored flattered and uh, and confused what what how do you know who I am <laughs> wow you're the, the you're the proper you're the the proper dudes over there in in the in the United States on the West Coast doing the West Coast blues thing for for forty years or something and you're giving me this invitation so thanks very much did you enjoy it did you have fun out with it I mean did you yeah like I, had, it? I had huge fun great uh, it wasn't it wasn't kind of um, fall down the stairs fun or let or light the hotel room on fire kind of fun it was good clean fun right. <laughs> one of the things that I that I noticed looking at at kind of just reading about your 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 chronology and the discography is you've had some success with some of your stuff getting placed in films and television episodes i'm i'm trying to remember like devil take my soul was a, in a film i believe and shake a bone in revolution town and is it voodoo doll were they all tv things yeah stuff got in good tv shows i think yeah the devil take my soul was uh, was in a robin williams film okay Quite a quite a bunch of years ago and uh, I had uh, a tune in Breaking Bad and uh, and The Preacher which are both AMC uh, productions yeah. and uh, there's been lots of other little bits so uh, yeah luckily there's a little reputation uh, for getting Son of Dave uh, music in, into uh, to thoughts. We're gonna pause for a second and with your permission we're we're going to do a sneak preview of the stuff you've been in the studio this week working on. Is that right? You were in this week, right? And, and uh, what the name of this song is uh, Get a Strut On. So we'll pause here and, and, and take a quick listen to that. We'll be right back. So that's Son of Dave doing uh, Get a Strut On is the, is the title of the new CD uh, music yeah, for yeah. music for cop shows? Uh, it's working title. I can't. It's working I can't. title. Working. I like that title, dude. I got to tell you. We're going to put out a few tunes before the album comes out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Out first. Okay. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, and, and I'm not sure I'll understand it all or how much you want to talk about it, but the actual nuts and bolts of like what you're hitting with with your feet while you're doing stuff i mean it looks to me like you've got you know obviously an octave thing and you've got at least one looping device or is it multiple looping devices i for eight years i was just using a you know a two button looping device 
put them on, stack them on, take them off. Uh, now uh, it's a it's a bigger spaceship looking thing. I don't like uh, it's it's too many buttons. It's really I don't like all that technology, but uh, but it it's essentially three three tracks that you can that you can get going. This okay. allows me to put a, a chorus or a, sure. a section of the song in a, in a, with a different progression or a different key. Sure. Yeah, it's cool, and and, and I love the sound. I mean, are you what kind of What's your amplifier and your microphone when you're getting that that real traditional kind of blues sound? Because it's a great you're getting a great tone, man. It's fantastic. Well, that's real nice. Um, uh, on the road, I use whatever whatever they got kicking around. Okay. okay? So some nights are better than others. You sure? Uh, if if uh, if I do shows in France, they'll always offer to get me the uh, an amp that I like. You know, uh, whereas in the UK here, you you, you got to take what you get sometimes. But uh, so I'll often ask for uh, an amp with with uh, with four tens in it. You know, four ten inch speakers. Okay. Looks like that, and you know, so the Fenders with four tens in them tend tend to be uh, my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for recording, uh, it's usually uh, it's usually that if I can be bothered to haul it to the studio. Although lately I've been playing with a sort of a, a broken, really undignified Marshall of some sort. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, I, I'm not using a bullet. I'm just using a dynamic uh, kind of Beta 57 microphone. Yeah. And so I'm trying to get it. Try to get it. I, I don't also use a lot of overdrive like, uh, yeah. like a lot of heart players do because I need to get more dynamic sound. So you need lots of bass. Uh, and 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 lots of uh, high end, and uh, not squish it all up in the mids. So it's pretty dynamic sound with only a little bit of overdrive going on. Uh, I actually and for recording, I, I'm, I usually have the vocal uh, a good Neumann uh, like a vocal microphone in front of me. So we're recording through the amp and and uh, acoustically as well with a you know through the handheld microphone. Sure. And then uh, another microphone here to uh, to uh, to pick up the acoustic thing, and it's usually going to pick up stuff in the room as well. So they're taking three or four signals every time I play a harmonica. Let's talk a little bit about Seidel. Um, Let's. Where did where did you how did you get turned on to Seidel instruments? I saw. Um, I saw a, a fellow named Wade Schumann playing, and his his group's called Hazmat Modi. Sure. Don't know how I found them, but uh, twigged on to, to them. And uh, I think uh, Wade pointed out that he was playing Sadles. But uh, especially because I was uh, playing the, a lot of low keys. Uh, I, I do I play a lot of low keys. Right. Uh, uh, finding Sadle was, was, just, uh, was just perfect timing. And uh, they started to send me a couple of samples, and there was just no question. Great, great uh, built harp, harps, lots of variety, stainless steel reeds. Yeah. Did you? What? Which model are you playing? Are you playing the classic, the one with the wooden comb, or the or the white and one with the white comb? Yeah, I started with the the white combs because, uh, yeah, the, uh, both. I've, okay. I've, I've picked up both of those, but I'm 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 happy with either of those. I like those. Okay. What are they? The uh, the the say 1847 uh, classics, as you, as you say, with the wooden comb. Yeah. The white combs as well. And yeah. 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 Uh, so this is just a genius, great relationship. Well, man, it's been great visiting with you. Best of luck on the on the new CD coming out, and uh, and folks, I would encourage you to go check out uh, Son of Dave's music and his videos. They're they're really fun and they're really inventive, and it's just really good stuff. Thanks so much for taking the time to uh, to do this, man. Take care. Well, uh, it's it's another one of these little things that uh, that makes me feel uh, uh, proud and happy. So th thanks for the invitation to come on your program. My PT, it's, it's an honor. You're also a great player, and these are Thank great harps and, and all the rest of it. Thanks, man. Take care. Okay. Peace out. Oh, 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 oh,
Dominique Parfum. <rire> 